Hey, what's up, OT Runners? Uh, this is a tutorial on the new Any% percent route that does not use Slingshot, does not use Ocarina, does not use Controller 3. So as of right now, this route is legal on the leaderboards. Um, I think it has the potential to be a little bit faster even than the Controller 3 route. Um, and the reason why I'm making this tutorial right now is so that other people can learn it and have a chance at uh, getting the $1,000 bounty for the fastest time by the end of February. It's February 22nd right now, and so apologies if this tutorial seems scattered. I'm trying to get it out as fast as possible so other people can compete too, because right now I think I'm the only player who knows how to do this. Um, so this is the file name. If it's hard to see or you're not sure, um, Mr. Cheese, who's the guy who came up with the main route idea, uh, has a video that demos the route using TAS, and I'm going to link that in the description below. And at the very beginning of his run, he actually types in this file name so you can follow along with uh, the characters that he uses. Um, so, let's dive right in. The two watches that are on the side of the screen right now, which I'm going to fix, are Link's facing angle. You can see it changes when Link moves. And the camera facing angle, which is different than Link's facing angle, because the camera doesn't always look where Link looks. Um, so, to start off, you're going to get 40 rupees, uh, you're going to get the sword and shield, 55 rupees rather, sword and shield, um, pretty standard. I have a PB on my YouTube that you can follow the rupee route for, um, but the most important thing is that you get the correct permanent rupees, because that will affect the heat manipulation. Um, so you're going to be getting every single permanent rupee in Kokiri Forest, and I'll list them right now. Those are the three invisible ones that you get near this crawl space. So there's going to be a green right here, and then another blue, another green and a blue right there in, in the air. You just backflip through them. Um, there's a blue one inside this sign that you're going to get. There's a blue one behind Mido's house. There's a blue one up for bridge clip up there. Um, and I believe that's it. Those are all the permanent ones, and you need to get all of them for the heat manipulation to work out. Um, and so once you get your 55 rupees, then you're going to go buy a shield, and you're going to buy Decanuts, and then you're going to leave the shop, and that's where the fun begins, and that's where the meat of this tutorial is going to be. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain uh, what is happening in this run with the arbitrary code execution that we're going to use. So, the things that you need to know are that the arbitrary code execution revolves entirely around an actor that is sitting right over here, um, I will find my way to it so I can show you. Please excuse my dog who is drinking lots of water right now. <laughs> and... Okay, so this actor, um, which when you first come out of the shop will be at this address. Um, it's actor ID 112, variable 260. That is an actor called Wonder Item, and it's an invisible thing that's right around here. If I go to it, you'll see where it is. Oh, I was already right on it. It's right there. Um, and this actor, which is right here, controls the blue rupee that you get from jumping across these stepping stones. Um, and this thing, it will update when you look at it, and it will cull, which means stop updating when it's sufficiently far off camera. So let me show you. Um, 801FA140. So we're going to put a watch seven bytes into the start of this actor. So 801FA140, we're going to put a watch at 801FA140, seven, and that number will read four when it's, when the actor is active, um, and it will read zero when it's not. So you can see when it gets far enough off camera, it will cull, and then it'll turn to zero, right? And then eventually, if I look towards it, it'll become 40 again when it gets close off camera, or close on camera. So, our entire goal with this is to do some heat manipulation so that we load this thing for exactly nine frames while Link is facing a certain direction. And we'll get to that later. But for now, uh, we're just going to leave that and move on to the actual meat of this tutorial, which is the ace. So, the first thing you need to do is jump across these stepping stones 
and collect this blue rupee. Um, you need to actually collect it. If you just, like, run out the timer, it will come back when you re-enter this room later. We don't want that. So we're gonna move Mido. I have quick text on. And so now we're gonna do some heat manipulation across this room, uh, room transition here. And now this can't just be done willy-nilly. The camera actually needs to be pretty special so that Mido stays uh, active, stays unculled while you cross the room transition from the village to here on some of the transitions, and I'll tell you which ones. So the very first transition you want to do, you want the camera to be facing a little bit upright, kind of like this. You see this like light patch on the wall? I like to just kind of get in line with that. It means it's a pretty good indicator that you're facing the good, a good direction, so that Mido will stay active when you cross the transition. And while you cross the transition, you want to be holding a charge spin. Um, and just release it. And then you want to also stay on this line when you go back into the next room, because actually, that Baba back there needs to be active when you cross back into the village. And if this Baba is culled, which means it's like too far off camera to be active, then the heat manipulation won't work. So that Baba and Mido uh, kind of always have to be active when you cross the room transitions for some of these transitions. Um, and that's why this line that I'm taking right here is so good because it kind of makes a straight line between Mido and this Baba and things that are directly behind the camera have a high chance of staying active. So we came across here with Mido active and our sword uh, in a spin attack. Next we're just gonna cross back over, gonna cross back over, gonna cross back over. So that's two full back and forths and on the first one only is when we have our sword active. Um, now the next one we're gonna have Mido not active when we go back in. So you just turn around basically. Um, and that puts Mido too far away to matter. And then back over. And then the last one, we're gonna have Mido active again, so turn around and run across the, the transition. So, next, that's all the heat manipulation we need to do. Next, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna get Return A off this Baba, which basically just means that while the Baba is rocking, you press Z, R, and C up all in the same frame. Um, and so next, what you need to do is we need to make sure that this Baba behind us doesn't cull. So we're gonna side hop once to the left, closer to it, so that you can hear it behind you, um, and that will make sure that the Baba is close enough to Link and on camera close enough that it stays active across this room transition. And then once you cross the transition, you can side hop back to the wall, and then we'll make our way over here. Just keep side hopping all the way up to the crawl space. You can do whatever movement you like. Found this movements to be pretty fast though. Um, I'm gonna go in and out of the crawl space. Oh, do I have Deccanuts in this file? I do, okay. And you want to get walking while talking, which basically just means read the sign and then throw a Deccanut to cancel it. Target the sign, get in this corner, pause so you don't soft lock by pressing A. Um, also, advance the sign text with C up. That way, um, that way you don't slash your sword. So backflip, and then when you side hop now to the left, release target the same time you side hop. I'm just gonna mash these side hops down to here. Do a side roll to the left. That's why we wanna keep our sword away. Come over to this rock and stand right about here. You wanna use the floor textures to know where to stand. There's like a dark green line that's like right to the back of Link's right heel right now. You wanna stand a little bit in front of that. And then just press B to swing your sword, and mash A, and you'll lift the thing. So next, you're going to, during this camera, uh, you're going to navigate to the Baba room again. Um, and I haven't worked out exactly what the fastest movement here is, but I'll tell you what I use to be successful. I hold upright until Link disappears behind the pillar there, and then I continue to hold upright for 10 music counts. So, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then I'm gonna hold straight right until you see the uh, the buttons on the display blink into existence. That's the indicator that Link has crossed that little triangle of water over by Mido. So it usually happens after between like 13 and 15 counts, depending on exactly the timing that you switched angles. Uh, there it is. So now I'm gonna hold down right for about five counts. One, two, three, four, five. 
I'm gonna hold upright for 10 counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're gonna hold up left for about six counts and the room transition should snap us back into reality. And, okay. So once we've made it here, what you wanna do is walk downwards along this wall and you want to align the camera to exactly 8,000. Um, so reminder that the first number on my screen is what Link is facing and the second one is what the camera is facing. So now is a good time to explain that Link and the camera don't always face the same direction even if it looks like they do, right? So first of all, let me ESS to the uh, left once and you'll see that Link is facing 8708 and the camera has aligned to what appears to be behind Link but isn't exactly. Um, and then the other thing to note about stuff like this is that if you ever press the up uh, analog stick, Link will always align himself to exactly the camera angle. So right now Link is at 8708, eight, eight, the camera is at 85B3, if I tap up, Link aligns himself to 85B3. It doesn't look like he moved, but he did. Um, and you don't have to just do ESS so it doesn't look like he moves, you can like take a step and he'll align. Um, okay, so first thing you want to do is align to the angle 8000. And the camera will do that for you automatically because it's a cardinal direction if you're facing a little bit to the right of it. So if I'm facing a little bit to the right of it and then I hold ESS up, the camera will automatically align and Link will follow. So 8,000 for free. Um, the other thing to explain here is that we're going to be doing a lot of camera manipulation in order to get particular angles for this SRM and ACE to work. Um, and so you need to know when the camera is going to be volatile and when it's going to be steady. Uh, volatile meaning like it will rotate the moment you rotate if you've been standing in one place for too long. So right now if I press ESS left, Link, the camera will automatically rotate as soon as Link does. ESS right, the camera will automatically rotate as soon as Link does. So, but if you move, the camera will give you a few seconds before it rotates. So let's say I take a step forward. Now I can rotate and the camera doesn't, right? So your goal is to know when it's safe to rotate Link without rotating the camera as well. So what we want to do right now is we want to get Link to be facing an angle that is between 8F7A and 8F-A5. Uh, and there's a bunch of ways to do that, but we've chosen one in particular that leads really well into the next part of the setup after that, and I'll get to it. So that the way that we're gonna get this angle is we're gonna tap up uh, so that Link takes a small step, and that way the camera won't rotate very quickly after that. We're gonna flick down to face uh, angle zero, and then we're gonna ESS left, and kind of circle ESS up and around so Link is facing kind of up left, and he'll be facing exactly the angle we want. So tap up, tap down, rotate around here, and we'll get the angle 8F80, and that's exactly the one you want. Um, and you can kind of know when you have the right angle based on uh, some cues. You see those vines that are in the back right over there? We want those to be just barely off the edge of the screen, and that will happen if you're at the correct angle. So 8F80 is what we want, and we're gonna drop the rock at this angle, and we're gonna do that with the R button, that's all. Next, we're going to make sure we align Link to 8F, or sorry, we're going to uh, align the camera to Link in this case. And we're going to do that by pressing the C up button, and then leaving, and then the camera is going to be nearly aligned to Link. Um, 8F85 is a really good angle for us. We're going to align Link to that by pressing ESS up, and then we're going to do a small step so the camera doesn't move. And then we're going to rotate ESS all the way around to 697D. And that's a good one, uh, because this is where we're going to do a spin attack. You can know it's 697D if you're standing all the way on the left like I am, kind of just after the Baba Room transitions, you'll know you have a good angle because the B button will split this wall right in half, or the edge of that wall. Um, so once you have this angle, just go ahead and do a spin attack. And then we're gonna make our way over here for the final bit. Um, if you circle around here, you can get the camera to play nice. You want this camera angle to align to exactly C00 as you're walking down. So if you are kind of like facing a little bit to the right of it while you're walking, it'll automatically align while you're walking. You can see it's like turning, 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 and then it aligns perfectly to C000. 
So once you get to here, um, you want to be standing right about where I'm standing. You can see there's kind of like a light circle of grass, and there's a dark green patch inside it. So I'm standing kind of at the back of the dark green inside the light circle. I'm going to stand like right around here, um, and then turn left. But I guess right now is a really good time to mention, do not ever, once you're at this point, look at the village. Because once we're at this point, we need to keep that actor that I mentioned earlier, the wonder item that controls the blue rupee on the stepping stones, we need to keep that off camera at all costs. If we look at it right now, we will crash the game. So, once you're in the village, uh, stay away from looking at it. And the, the place where you have to not look at it is anywhere beyond this point. Oh, and also, while you're doing the angle setups in that hallway, make sure the camera doesn't ever look towards the village because you might crash, even though it's super far away. So basically, always keep the camera away from the village from SRM onwards. Um, so stand like right around the back of the green circle like we're at now, and then face left to angle 8000, align with Link, and then we're going to walk all the way to the edge of the water right here until the camera starts to look down. Um, and the position here is not super precise, but basically there's this dark patch right around here. We want to be standing near the edge of the water at angle 8000, kind of like a little bit before the dark patch, like right around here is good. It's not super precise, but basically the position that we want is specifically chosen so that when the camera swings around to look at the village at the right time, we're going to load that wonder item for exactly nine frames. So as we can see right now, the third watch that I've got up is zero, and that means that the wonder item is not loaded. That's good. So the very first thing we're going to do once we are here at angle 8000 is do a down right sh uh, shield turn or a uh, down right flick if you're feeling really risky. Um, and that will put Link at angle 2000. If it's not for you, that means your down right is bad and that kind of sucks. I'll go over a potential alternative, but it's really slow. Um, so we're at angle 8000 and we're going to go down right shield turn to angle 2000. And we're going to do ESS left until, if you look at the mini-map, Link's uh, triangle is facing a little bit to the right, kind of towards like 1 o'clock. You want it to be facing, the very first time it's facing to the left, which is this one, kind of like towards 11 o'clock. If you go like this, you're too far. The very first ESS turn that's facing to the left is the one you want. And Link will be facing 8, 9, 7, 8. Um, and you want to align the camera to him, to 8, 9, 7, 4. And then you want to tap ESS up uh, so that Link is at 8974. And this angle is really good because it's just a multiple of ESS turns away from our target angle of 0804. And that's the angle that Link needs to be facing when the Wonder Item is active on screen. If Link is facing any other angle when the Wonder Item is active, the game will crash. So here's what we're going to do we're going to go into C up and out of C up so that. I'm going to use frame advance here so that we have a little bit of time before the camera starts to spin. And during that time, we're going to spin Link himself. We're going to circle ESS all the way around to angle 804, which is almost exactly 180 degrees, but not quite. So don't flick down. You actually need to circle ESS until here, until angle 804. And then, then you just stop. You can pause buffer this if you want. So once you're at angle 804, you're just going to stand here and do nothing and let the camera rotate. And eventually it will. I'm going to use frame advance to show that the wonder item is going to be active during this camera rotation. At first for two frames, right around here. One, two, and then it's going to go off again. And then for seven more frames later on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then back to zero again. So in total, it was active for nine frames. Uh, and then once the little square pillar that's off the screen to the top right right now goes off screen, that's your cue to know that uh, you're done. And then from there, just make your way over to this house. And what you should have done is a successful credits warp. Uh, and that's a lot to go over, but hopefully that was helpful. Um, I'm gonna snap back now over here, and I'm going to go over what to do if your downright notch sucks. Um, this is going to suck a lot for you if your downright notch sucks, but we need another way 
to reach the angle that is only S turns away from 0804, which is our target angle. So what we normally do is get 2,000 and then rotate here to 8978, C up, and align to 8974, and that's our target angle. But there's another way. Uh, the other way is, so starting at angle 8,000, you're gonna go into C up, and you're gonna hold left for a certain number of frames that I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Eight frames of full left, and then exit C up, and then re-enter C up. And that will put uh, the camera at 8964, very close. Uh, 16 units too few, or 10 in hexadecimal, however you want to say it. Uh, align link to that by pressing ESS up, so 8964. And so then what we're going to do is a couple offset moves, um, where we always align link to the camera by small increments in order to gain those 16 units that we need. So do four ESS turns to the right, one, two, three, four, press C up to align, and you'll notice that Link is, uh, his angle is seven units less than the camera, so we're gonna ESS up and gain seven units. One more ESS right, align, we're six units too few, so we're gonna gain those six units by ESS up. So far we've done seven and six, that's 13. And then we're gonna do ESS right, one more time, align, and we're gonna gain six or seven more units because this camera likes to flicker. And so now we've overshot our 16 necessary units and we ESS back the way we came. 8977 and the camera gives us 8974 so we're gonna align to that and from there it's the same you see up you turn around to 804 and you let the camera spin and we're gonna get two frames followed by seven frames of the wonder item being active and then you can go in the house and that will be that so I think that's everything that I wanted to mention um, this was kind of rushed and so there's a very good possibility that I missed something or explain something poorly. Uh, if you have questions on how this stuff actually works, I'm not really the guy to ask for that. Um, I just sort of translated it into gameplay for you. So ask in the OOT Discord. If you have questions, feel free to tag me about gameplay questions. And uh, good luck.